welcome to The Conscious Investor. Let's get started. Imposter syndrome is a real thing. So many of us tell ourselves on a regular basis, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. They're better than I am. I'm too old. I'm too. And we think about all these reasons why we can't. Today, I want to dive into a new approach to the imposter syndrome. It's going to send you for a wild ride. And so make sure that you stick around to the end so that you're not missing out on any of the goodness. If you haven't already subscribed, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. And more importantly, if you haven't shared an episode with someone, please, if it serves you in any capacity, if this episode encourages you or supports you or makes you smile, laugh, cry, whatever it is, if it's something of value, please make sure to share it with someone because this podcast grows organically through my awesome listeners like you. Let's go ahead and dive into imposter syndrome. Have you ever experienced that? You walk into a room and you just think, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? I can tell you in the last couple of years, I've sat at some tables to break bread with people that I'm like, how, why, I don't belong here. These people are all so much smarter and more accomplished than I am. That right there is imposter syndrome, right? And it happens to everybody along the way. Recently, I was working, um, I did did a coaching call with, with some a potential client. And what came out of that call was that battle with imposter syndrome. And in that conversation, I asked a simple question. And I want you to think about this for a moment. When's the last time you just sat down with that imposter? You see, we're spending so much time and energy running away, trying to get away from this imposter syndrome. We're trying to just like push it to the side, get out of here. I don't want to listen to you. And, you know, we'll use all of our mindset tricks, right? They're not tricks, but for this, we're going to call it that for this, right? And we'll say, okay, well, I'm just going to, you know, give myself an affirmation and I'm going to think this particular way. But I want to ask you this, how much energy are you spending and exerting just trying to push the imposter away? We spend so much, it just sucks us dry if we allow it to. But what about this? What if we no longer engage the imposter like a nasty mosquito? Do you ever have that happen when you're trying to go to bed, nice warm summer night, you have the windows open and maybe the door has been open a little bit more than usual and the mosquitoes come in and there's always, there's that one that buzzes around bzzz, and you feel it land and, and, and you're kind of like, oh my gosh, did it just land on me? And you start smacking your head. Okay. Maybe that's just me. But <laughs> all that to say, what if the imposter is not a nasty mosquito that's just trying to annoy you and suck your blood. What if the imposter is actually more of a butterfly and more of an opportunity? As I worked with this person and we evaluated that question and evaluated some of the imposters, we just took one, one of those imposters. And in all reality, it meant I have to face that pain. I don't want to do that. But we're not, we are significantly miscalculating what it is actually taking from us to hold that imposter off at bay. If we simply receive the imposter and we sit down with the imposter and we start evaluating, just imagine for a moment you have a butterfly that lands on your fingers and its wings are just gently, you know, doing its open close thing. And it's just hanging out there. What if your imposter was more of that butterfly and you just sat there and you watched that butterfly 
and you went down and, and you allowed yourself to contemplate. Why do I feel this way? Why do I feel that I'm not successful? Which would not lead to a natural question, right? Well, what, what is success? Wait a second. I have been saying that success is everything that these people are doing, but that's not even what, how I define success. You see, when we allow ourselves to actually sit down with the imposter, we start having realizations about what we really believe. We also have some realizations about some of the pain that we've experienced in life. Let me ask you this, when it comes to pain, if you had broken leg or broken wrist, would you just ignore it? You see, pain is another opportunity. That pain is that opportunity that says, hey, we got a problem here, we gotta fix it. And when we ignore that pain, it leads to something worse, something greater, more costly. When we break a limb, we acknowledge the pain. <laughs> this morning, I actually hit my kneecap on the corner of my bed, and I, I don't do that very often, and I'm not in pain very often, and goodness, it knocked me to the ground. I was like, oh, and it's still tender. All that to say, that pain is an opportunity to care for something that needs our attention. For those of you who are listening to this, and part of your imposter syndrome probably stems from some hurts that happened years ago. And you've been unwilling to acknowledge them. You've been running from them. Could you imagine running a marathon for a lifetime? That would be exhausting. What could you do with all of that energy? that you save from holding the imposter at bay, what could you accomplish in your life and for the world around you, for the people you care about, what could you actually accomplish? You see, we wanna use our energy well. And when we have that imposter syndrome show up in our life, that's, that's not our enemy. That is our opportunity to say, oh, <laughs> whoa, I didn't see that inside of me. Let's go take a look under the hood and see why am I feeling like this? And when we allow ourselves to do that, a lot of times it's going to lead to a laugh. I can't believe I thought that. A lot of times it's going to lead to clarity. Oh, well, now I really understand what I think it is to be a smart person or a successful person or a caring person. And a lot of times it's going to lead to healing. I didn't realize that that hurt me so much. That was 30 years ago. Goodness. How strange. But isn't it stranger yet that we often ignore this and hold it at bay? My challenge to you this week is every time you see that imposter pop its, its face up, don't look at it as a nasty mosquito trying to bite you and suck your blood. Look at it as the butterfly opportunity. That is your opportunity to grow. And, you know, butterflies do come from cocoons, so you could also think maybe I'm going to emerge from this cocoon. There is something that's been holding me back, and now I get to grow, and now I'll have more energy to pour into these things that are so important to me, that have value and meaning and purpose. Let's use our energy wisely. Let's use our time wisely, and let's invest in ourselves wisely so that we can better invest in the world around us. You're awesome. You know, if you're listening to this and you're realizing that you're battling that imposter on a regular basis, head over to juliehollycom schedule a free strategy call, free coaching call. Let's talk about it. I don't have a ton of coaching spots available um, at any given time, but you know what? Sometimes we just need a little nudge 
and sometimes spots open up. Until next time, live big, love bigger. Feeling alone, disconnected? Conscious investors often feel alone or disconnected because of their unique perspective and desire to expand their thinking. But the journey of a lifetime isn't meant to be solo or forged by grit alone. Join the Conscious Investor community on Facebook, link arms, exchange ideas, and expand your thinking on finances, relationship, and community. Join the Conscious Investor group on Facebook today.